a lot of instructors are now including discussion forums so students can share their own resources for the course, um, both in regards to each chapter and for the course overall. Um, like I said earlier, in the, uh, our upper level psychology courses, um, we've had students who have gone out and found their own open educational resources um, and have shared that with the class. So if anybody else can't afford the textbook, um, they can use that alternative. Uh, I don't want them to think that my course is the end all and be all of all knowledge about that subject. So I like to send them out to find sources to support themselves that are not part of the course. Um, it takes a little bit of the onus off me. Uh, they don't, they, they can't say, oh, it's just the teacher just wants this, you know, you have to do what the teacher wants. Um, they find out that other people in the outside world also agree that this is a best practice or that this is a, a way to write an essay. And um, so that's good. And just simply having them go out and find pieces of knowledge to bring back it shows them that they can also teach, they can also um, construct information from other places and pu pull it together. So I think that's really important. Um, you shouldn't insulate your course so that your course is the only thing they see. You want them to know that it connects to the real world. Mostly what we have them do is just provide a web link to the resource. Um, we haven't, I don't think most of our instructors have them cite the source. Um, Mostly it's just sharing web links of freely available material. Whether or not the uh, materials are cited is up to each individual professor to decide. Um, sometimes the instructors take that content and incorporate it into their course content. Um, sometimes they, they let the students in future classes stumble upon it themselves. In the College of Information where I teach, I'm really encouraged to think about resources we use um, both open, open access and just available. And in that, our departments decided in learning technologies that we really want to think about what's available for learning, training and development for students that's open and free and available and connected to the professional organization. So I have my students go through the different chapters um, that of the textbook topics we would and give them areas they want to search and they go and find resources themselves. So they would find articles, uh, news articles, journal articles, blogs, relevant video, media, um, podcasts, maybe an audio clip, and they would put it in and share it um, for that relevant topic within each module. Uh, there is a vetting process and there's peer review, both by myself and we have peer kind of editors that would approve or not if it's a valid resource. So we want to go beyond that wiki or about page level and ask them what is the information they're finding, is it relevant, and would it be something they use in a project that they're going to later have to design. So it gets put into a curated wiki and then we have a great resource for our students to use now and then it lives beyond the course so they get to use it for life in their work. So I teach Hamlet. I love Shakespeare and it's one of the most relevant plays to today and they see that by the time they're finished reading it but um, there's a controversy about whether Hamlet is insane or if he's just acting insane. And so I have them go out and find as many scholarly sources as possible about this topic and there, there are tons. But they go out and find two or three. They have to cite the source they found it from and say whether they agree or disagree. And it's not, it's not a settled question. It, if you can imagine, like, I mean, you know, how many hundreds of years we've been asking this question. It's not settled, so there's a lot of stuff out there about it. And um, it's wonderful to see what, what they find and what they bring back and how they, they might find something that disagrees with them and they will argue in their discussion um, post on that about whether or not Hamlet is insane. I just ask them to support their own side, but often they'll bring back the pros and cons and they'll bring back two different sources and say, you know, but this is the one I agree with. So, yeah, th I get a lot uh, from that assignment. Well, there are also a lot of crackpot ideas out there about um, the psychology of Hamlet. And so um, it's not really a danger, but they will, if they aren't sophisticated searchers of the web, they will find some really strange sources and things that they can't even cite because there's nothing on the page to use as a, as a citation. So it's a learning tool, but it's also then, they, then those little weirdnesses get into the discussion and it's really up to the faculty member to go, mm, but, <laughs> and get in there and, and correct it. I don't, 
I don't uh, interject a lot into the discussions, but if they bring in a, a nefarious source, I will go in and explain why it's not valid. So that's, you never know what they're going to bring in. You got to kind of be um, open to being surprised and to putting out fires or whatever happens. So it's good. Sometimes students don't understand the concepts that they're, uh, they're studying yet. Um, and they, they provide resources that aren't suitable. Um, but it's, it's been great that other students have been quick to point that out to them um, in a nice way. Um, so uh, I don't think there's too much of that in our courses. So in the textbook process, they, they were kind of resistant because a lot of my learners um, in undergrad really want to just be given something, they're gonna read it and plug and play. And so when they had to look, um, a lot of them were frustrated. Uh, then they got competitive about it and they're like, I want to beat so-and-so to get this resource because I think that's the one for the textbook. So they actually found it fun and a challenge and said they were really excited to use some of the resources in the class and then it lived on beyond them, so that was great. We talk a lot about how they're searching first. I think scaffolding, like what do you typically do and how to search really well. So beyond Google, what are your search terms? Are you putting things in brackets and adding or is there a tilde that's somewhat like? And a lot of them are kind of baffled by oh, I don't actually know how to search. And um, are they using more than Google? Are they using our library search sites, just the databases they can use? Um, and I think breaking them down really helps them too. But yes, we have some clickbait material and we have some ones that have spam ads or it's an advertisement for a consultant. And it's been helpful actually to bring some of those examples forward. We don't share like who in the class did this, uh, but we share what do we think about this and what can we tell and um, just like highlight a couple areas. Um, I've asked a couple students to do that and then I've shared an article with them and said is this a valid source. So giving them that comparison I've learned at the beginning of the course is helpful. But otherwise you'll see students, the peer editors reject and say no that's not going on the wiki or do you think that's relevant because that person is just trying to hawk their goods on being a consultant in training and development. So they realize that um, I think it's to go past like first page level searches, thinking about what their sources are. And now we have to think about the logarithms. And if they're just searching on Google, what does that say if they can only hit page one versus going into the 10th page of a Google search? So it's a skill set. So if they can figure out what is relevant, so information literacy is really important, um, searching and finding what's out there, but also having a, a critical eye what's um, real, what's kind of a good primary, secondary source, going back to their basics of search, and then figuring out well, what else would I be interested in related to this topic? And looking at maybe references within a journal article or saying if there was an author of a newspaper article, what else are they writing about in that topic and just branching out that way.